Hey everyone, Shade Nox here and welcome to my Assassination Rogue PvP guide for Shadowlands Season 3, Patch 9.2. We'll begin this guide with stat priority and gearing, talents and honor talents. Then we'll have a look at all the Shadowlands features, so covenants and soulbinds, conduits, legendaries, as well as a few words on the tier set. The last part of the guide will be made of the rotation, the comps you can play in arena, and macros and add-ons that I recommend for PvP. Now, let's get started on the first part of this guide, stat priority and gearing, talents and honor talents. As Assassination Rogue in PvP, the stat priority is Versatility, Haste, Mastery, and Critical Strike. Versatility increases all your damage done and decreases all your damage taken. It makes you more deadly and more resilient at the same time. Haste increases the tick rate of your bleeds, giving you more damage, but also more energy regeneration through the passive Venomous Wounds. It also increases your auto attack speed, which is worth mentioning because auto attacks are a large part of your damage, and this in turn leads to more poison procs. Mastery is a flat damage increase to your bleeds and poisons. It is good, but not good enough to be better than haste. Critical strike isn't that good in PvP because critical attacks only deal 75% more damage as opposed to 100% more damage in PvE. Just be aware that Assassination has a passive called Seal Fate that gives you more combo points when you critically strike with an ability that awards combo points. Regarding gear, you want to use as many PvP items as possible because they have the best item level in PvP combat. You'll want haste and versatility on every single item. Luckily for us assassination rogues, the PvP vendor offers haste versatility on every single item except daggers and gloves. Your ideal gear will look like this. As you can see, every item is a PvP item with haste and versatility on it. In patch 9.2 we have a set that we need to equip in order to unlock additional powers. The stats on the set pieces cannot be changed so we can easily see which part is the worst one and just equip the other four. As such, regarding set, you'll want to equip the head, shoulders, hands and legs. If you do not have access to the set yet, simply replace it with haste versatility items from the PvP vendor. The Covenant Legendary, Unity, is best used on the chest as this is where you'll get the most sass from. Last, if you use the Legendary Dustwalker's patch, then craft it on the second ring to have haste and versatility on that slot. If you decide to use any other Legendary that cannot be crafted on the ring, then your second ring should be the Mastery Versatility ring from the PvP vendor. If you are a high-end mythic raider, then you can find daggers with haste and versatility on one of the last bosses of the new raid. These daggers are the best one you can get, but no worries if, like me and almost every other PvP rogue player, you are stuck with the PvP daggers, they are more than fine. Last, the trinkets. If you are not a human, then you have to play the medallion to be able to escape lethal CC. If you are a human, then you can instead equip the brooch in order to reduce the duration of incoming CC while still being able to escape stuns with your human racial as stuns are typically the kind of CC you will die into. The second trinket can be a resonator if your team also plays it. In that case, you will use it alongside kidney shot form of burst damage. If you need more defense against a team that deals heavy magic damage, then you can equip the Aegis in order to increase your survivability. The Emblem is another powerful defensive option when there isn't that much magic damage, but you still need more defensive. If you are not in any of these situations, um, then you can use the Insignia as your default trinket as it gives you a lot of sustained damage. One last detail, Enchants and Gems. You want to enchant your chest with eternal stats, your cloak with fortified speed, your boots with eternal agility, your rings with tenet of versatility, and your weapons with one celestial guidance and one sinful revelation. Four of your six gems should be versatile jewel cluster, and in my opinion the last two should be movement speed gems, one straddling sage guard and one straddling jewel doublet. With both of these, the Cloak Ancient and the Knight of Movement Speed passive, you can reach a movement speed of 131% at all times, which is great to either run away from people or chase people down. On the first row of regular talents, you want to pick Master Poisoner. Ever since the addition of Hematoxin, we have started to play with Deadly Poison again. Master Poisoner greatly increases its damage and works really well with the Conduit Lethal Poisons. More damage is always nice. However, this talent truly shines for its secondary effect. With it, your crippling poison becomes a 60% slow up from 50%, making it the second best slow in the game in PvP right after Chains of Ice. Being able to control the movements of the enemy team is very powerful in PvP. It is also worth mentioning that the increased slow applied by Shiv is empowered by this effect as well, becoming a 84% slow in case you ever use Shiv outside of a kidney shot. The talent Elaborate Planning is also a viable pick. It noticeably increases your burst damage, as you should be able to have 100% uptime on it during your burst window, but it is not as good as Master Poisoner when it comes to overall damage and utility, so Master Poisoner is often a better pick. On the second row, you want to pick Subterfuge. 
This talent is simply amazing as it allows you to then crowd control on multiple enemies every time you come out of stealth. This gives you more options in the opener and makes your vanish more powerful as it can now be used defensively to stun again and silence, or to then CC on another target that would save the player you are trying to take down. It also has defensive value as it allows you to then CC on 3 different enemies when you or your team are in dire trouble and need to stop the enemy team from doing damage. And the cherry on top, it increases the damage done by a Garrote used from stealth or from the subterfuge window by 40% in PvP combat. The tooltip says 80% but it is cut in half in PvP. One last thing about subterfuge, it becomes even more powerful if you play a night elf. By using Shadow Mail to drop combat mid-fight and then stealth, you can access your stealth abilities for 3 seconds on demand without having to sacrifice Vanish, allowing you to safely create kill opportunities that just wouldn't have existed otherwise. On the third row you have two viable options that depend on your covenant. If you are playing Night Fae or Venthyr then you want to pick Marked for Death. If you are playing Nurkulord you want to pick Deeper Stratagem unless you are facing a comp such as a Rogue Mage that requires you to have an on-demand kidney shot. And if you are playing with, uh, with a Kyrian then you can consider both options. Marked for Death can be used in two different ways. You can use Marked for Death to be able to lend a kidney shot from stealth without having any combo points, or at any point to get a kidney shot without having combo points ready if your team needs the stun to happen right now. You can also use it aggressively to lend one more Envenom in your burst window. Deeper Stratagem slightly empowers the damage of your finishing moves and allows you to spend 6 combo points on them, empowering them. This talent shines mostly because it allows your kidney shot to last 7 seconds if it is used with 6 combo points. With such a long stun it is very easy to then kill on other players. The reason why Nightfair and Venthyr prefer Marked for Death is because these covenants are very bursty, so having the opportunity to kidney shot on demand or add one more Envenom to the burst is crucial. Also, the combo point generation isn't fast enough to greatly benefit from Deep Stratagem. This is an issue that Necrolords do not have. The Necrolord ability, Serrated Bone Spike, grants a lot of combo points for a very cheap energy cost, so Deeper Stratagem gains a lot of value. And since the Covenant makes the spec more oriented towards sustained damage rather than burst damage, it is a perfect fit. And as Kyrian, since you can play bursty builds that justify playing Marked for Death, but also builds that focus on powerful envenoms with the Kyrian Legendary and Doomblade that justify the extra damage on finishing moves provided by Deeper Stratagem, it is up to you to choose depending on what you are playing. Just keep in mind that Kyrian is not your best Covenant option, uh, but more on that in the Covenant section of this guide. On the fourth row you want to pick Elusiveness, although a few scenarios require cheat death. Elusiveness is essential to your survival because rogues lack damage mitigation. With this talent, Fane can help you reduce incoming burst damage and help your healer keep you alive. You can use it during an enemy burst window if you're not in CC and know that huge damage is coming, or you can use it preemptively when you know that the enemy team will stun you to try to kill you. If you manage to pre-faint a kidney shot or a lasso, it can make the difference between surviving and dying. The short cooldown of Faint makes this talent one of the most powerful talents rogues have access to. Yet, sometimes you will face comps that deal close to no sustained damage and extremely brutal burst damage. Rogue Mage in 2v2 or Rogue Mage Priest in 3v3, both with a salty rogue, are the best examples. When faced with such a comp, you want to play Cheat Death. Oftentimes they will CC you before landing the stun anyway, making it impossible to preemptively use Faint, rendering elusiveness mostly useless. Cheat Death, however, can buy you the extra seconds your healer needs to get out of CC and save you on one of their kill attempts. On the fifth row, you want to pick Internal Bleeding. This adds a powerful bleed that deals noticeable damage to your kidney shot, adding a lot of pressure to your kill attempts. This bleed also works with the passive Venomous Wounds for even more energy regeneration during your kidney shot windows. On the sixth row, you want to pick Alacrity. Haste is one of your strongest stats, so having 10% extra haste for most of the fight greatly increases your damage output. I know some people dream of Exsanguinate being viable, especially with a new set bonus, but sadly it is not worth Alacrity. Alacrity gives you more stats, so it gives you more damage. Exsanguinate by itself doesn't create more damage, and it simply makes existing damage happen faster, but not fast enough to make a difference. On top of that, Exsanguinate is on the global cooldown, and you already have enough military globals to press on your burst window as it is. And you will rarely be able to refresh your dots just before your burst window without wasting a lot of damage and momentum, so Exsanguinate will rarely have the value it is supposed to have on paper. I apologize to all the Exsanguinate enthusiasts, but Alacrity is definitely much better. On the seventh row you want to pick Poison Bomb. With it, your Envenom and Rupture have a chance to proc a Poison Bomb that deals a small amount of damage. Even though the damage isn't amazing, it remains an increase to both your sustained and burst damage since it procs off your offensive finishing moves. Regarding Haunt Talents, you have several good options. 
I will only talk about the ones that I consider good enough in Arena by order of importance, and then I will give you several loadouts to answer different situations. Hemotoxin causes shift to reduce healing received by your target by 40%. This makes your damage very difficult to heal on your kill attempts, allowing you to secure kills easily. You should always play this talent unless you are playing against a comp such as a Rogue Mage or Rogue Hunter, as these comps don't have any significant healing that you can reduce with Hemotoxin. Smoke Bomb creates a cloud of smoke around you. Enemy players who are outside the cloud will not be able to target anyone inside of it, and the other way around. This talent is extremely powerful for multiple reasons. It can help you land a kill by stunning a target when they have no trinket, and then using Smoke Bomb to prevent the enemy team from healing or otherwise saving a target. Additionally, it can be used defensively to save yourself or an ally from a lethal cast that is about to go off, such as a Chaos Bolt or a Greater Pyroblast. It can also be used to prevent incoming crowd control on yourself or your team if said crowd control would result in you losing the game, such as a Polymorph or a Repentance on your healer when they have no trinket and you're low on HP. As you can see, this talent is very versatile and this is why it is so powerful. In every 3v3 situation, this is a must-have, but in a few 2v2 scenarios you will not play it, mostly when you know you will only ever attack the enemy healer. Dismantal is a strong PvP talent that allows you to disarm an enemy for 6 seconds. Disarming an enemy can delay their next kill attempt or simply stop it entirely if it is already ongoing. It can also be used defensively sometimes to prevent the use of defensive abilities that require a weapon. You should play this talent when facing a rogue, a warrior, a hunter, a death knight, a demon hunter or an enhancement shaman. While you will mostly use it defensively, be aware that against arms warriors, death knights and range hunter specs it can be used offensively. Arms warriors cannot use die by the sword while disarmed. Denying them of their main defensive cooldown is a great way to kill them. Similarly, Death Knights cannot use Death Strike while disarmed. Depriving them of their main source of self-healing against heavy burst damage can lead to a kill. Range Hunter Specs cannot use their Interrupt while disarmed. This can allow your team to lend a crucial cast like a Mind Games or a Polymorph, leading to a kill. Maneuverability is a strong talent against comps with heavy slows and multiple routes. It is a great pick when facing a Survival Hunter or a Frost Mage, and to a lesser extent when facing comps such as Windwalker Monk Restoration Shaman or Restoration Druid. You should play this talent if you don't need one of the three previous ones. Thickest Thieves is a great talent when you're playing with a teammate with high burst damage. Mages, Hunters, Priests, Warlocks and Retribution Paladins benefit greatly from a 15% damage buff on your goes. You should play this talent if you don't need two of the previous ones. Death Run Buff is a talent that you will rarely pick, or even never pick, but it has two special effects that you should be aware of. Upon using the spell, you leap into the air and land on your target with an Empowered Envenom. The first effect is that even if your target teleports away, rolls away or gets away by any other means after you've leapt into the air, then you will still land on top of them even if your character has to cross half the map and go through walls for it. It can surprise a monk that uses his port to get away from you if you time it right. The second effect is that as you leap into the air, you gain a very slight CC immunity frame. With proper timing, you can use DFA to immune an important CC such as a Kini Shot or a Dragon's Breath. While you will rarely use this talent to climb the ladder, knowing these two things can allow you to have some fun with it. Knowing all of this, most of the time you will pick Hematoxin, Smoke Bomb and Dismantle. As long as you are facing at least one DPS against which this arm is worth using, then you will play these three talents. If you are facing Rogue Hunter or Rogue Mage in 2v2, then you will replace Hematoxin with Maneuverability. If you are facing a comp with no DPS worth disarming but with heavy slows and multiple routes, such as a Frost Mage Destruction Warlock Healer in 3v3 or Survival Hunter Healer in 2v2, you will pick Maneuverability instead of Dismantle. If you are not facing a DPS worth disarming and the enemy team does not have slows or routes that make Maneuverability valuable, then you will play Thickest Thieves if at least one of your teammates has enough damage to benefit from it. For instance, when facing Thrall Druid Holy Priest in 2v2, or Shadow Priest Demon Hunter Healer in 3v3 while having a teammate with decent burst damage. If you don't need to play Disarm or Maneuverability and also don't have a partner that benefits from Thickest Thieves, then you can just default to System Shock for more damage. But unless you play with the Restoration Druid against the Shadow Priest Healer team in 2v2 or something like this, this situation will be very, very rare. Now, let's continue with the second part of this guide, the Shadowlands features, so Covenants and Soulbinds, Conduits, Legendaries and Hearset. There are four covenants available, each with their unique perks. These covenants are Nightfae, Necrolord, Kerrigan, and Venthyr. Both Nightfae and Necrolord are way better than the other two for Assassination Rogue in PvP. Let's have a look at each of them. Being Nightfae gives you access to Sipsis as your Covenant Rogue ability and Soul Shape as your Covenant Signature ability. 
Sepsis is a poison that deals fairly decent damage to your target over 10 seconds with a 1.5 minute cooldown and gives you access to one stealth ability when it expires. The reason why this covenant is so amazing for Assassination Rogue is that Sepsis is a poison and deals nature damage. As such, the damage is amplified by Shiv and the Conduit Well Blazed Steel, by Mastery, by Haste, by the 2 and 4 parts set bonus, and also has its own Conduit that greatly increases its damage. With all of that, Sepsis becomes a spell that deals extremely high damage over a very short period of time, making the burst of an assassination of a Night Fae Assassination Rogue quite lethal. On top of that, once it expires you have access to a stealth ability, so Cheap Shot, Corrode with its silence effect, Ambush or Sap. This can allow you to CC an enemy for free while bursting them down. One thing worth being aware of is that if you use Corrode first, it will silence your target as if it was a stealth attack, but it will go on cooldown and will not consume the Sepsis buff as if it was not a stealth attack. Essentially, you have access to two stealth abilities as long as Garot is the first one. That means that you can silence someone for 3 seconds and then st stun him for 4, or silence someone for 3 seconds and stun someone else for 4, or you silence your kidney target for 3 seconds after kidney shot and then DR stun for 2 more seconds leading to an extremely long CC chain that might allow you to kill your target. The Nightfell Legendary lets you gain Adrenaline Rush and Shadow Blades for 10 seconds once Sepsis expires. It is a decent Covenant Legendary to have, but it isn't all that amazing because your damage is tied to Sepsis and Shiv, which means you only get these two cooldowns after your Kidney Shot and Shiv expires, so after your damage has been dealt, and most likely when people are either already dead, or using defensives and crowd controlling you, greatly limiting the actual value of the Legendary. Soul Shape is a handy tool to have in order to escape a dangerous situation, or catch an enemy that is trying to escape. The best soul bind as Nightfit is Dreamweaver. The first passive is the well-known Pot Tender. Upon being killed, you become a seed. If your team is able to keep the seed alive for 10 seconds, you come back to life and have a second chance at winning the game. Usually the seed will die, but rarely it will make a difference. The second passive is Soothing Voice. After any CC you land expires, the target is massively slowed for 2 seconds. It can sometimes give you the time you need to kill your target when the enemy healer is in a blind or a sap, and the slow prevents him from reaching his DPS in time once your CC ends. The third passive is Field of Blossoms. Upon using Sepsis, a blue circle appears on the ground below you. Standing in it gives you 15% haste. Since you will use Sepsis on a stun target, you will often benefit from the haste during your burst window, greatly increasing your burst damage. The fourth passive is Waking Dreams. It is simply a shield that sometimes procs and gives you a little bit of sustained healing. The fifth and last passive is Dream Delver. This passive increases the damage you deal to your targets by 3%. It is a good increase to both your sustained and burst damage. Nia is also a viable soulbind, although it is slightly worse than Dreamweaver. The only benefit it has over the Dreamweaver is that it is a bit more bursty if you can land several envenoms during your Sepsis go, at the cost of sustained damage. Being Necrolord gives you access to Serrated Bone Spike as your Covenant Rogue ability and Fleshcraft as your Covenant Signature ability. Serrated Bone Spike is a physical attack that deals decent damage, is ranged, is cheap, can generate multiple combo points, has 3 charges and applies a bleed to your target that only expires if they reach max health, in which case a charge of the spell is refunded. This ability synergizes extremely well with assassination as it solves the issue of slow and expensive combo point generation that plagues the spec while giving away to her targets from afar. Both the dot and the initial hit are bleed effects and are therefore empowered by your mastery as well as your two part set bonus, allowing you to deal huge direct hits with the ability and decent dot damage. The dot is further empowered by haste, by the full part set bonus and by its own conduit that allows it to deal damage twice very often. The Necrolord Legendary gives Serrated Bone Spike two additional charges, allowing you to use it more frequently on your enemies for high damage. It also makes Serrated Bone Spike hit several enemies near your main target. It is great since Assassination is a spec that loves to cleave whenever the situation allows for it. Fleshcraft is a good ability to have, it is a nice shield, and with the right soulbind it can also heal you and allows you to immune CC. The best soulbind as Necrolord is Marileth. The first passive is very negligible. It gives you a small amount of mastery upon using Fleshcraft. The second passive, with its frictionless coating, shields you for 7.5% of your total health in PvP combat every time you drop below 50% health. This can only happen once every 30 seconds though. This passive is a nice increase to your survivability. The third passive, Ultimate Form, is the reason why this soulbind is so well known. While channeling Fleshcraft and for 4 seconds after completing the channel you heal for 2% of your maximum health every second, and most importantly you are immune to any and every CC. It can be very useful to delay a go or simply immune to CC if you can predict it. The fourth passive is simply a slight damage tiger, nothing very important. The fifth and last passive, Kevin's Oozling, lets your serrated bone spike summon Kevin every time you use it. 
Kevin grants you a very small shield, but most importantly, increases all your damage against your target by 6%. This passive greatly increases both your sustained and burst damage against your target. Nightfit and Necrolord are by far the best two covenants, which is why I gave a lot of details regarding what they offer to the spec and what still bind to pick. Carrion and Venthyr are honestly not very good compared to Nightfair and Necrolord, so I will not give as many details. Being Carrion gives you access to Echoing Reprimand as your Covenant Rogue ability and File of Serenity as your Covenant Signature ability. Echoing Reprimand deals moderate damage, grants 2 combo points, and empowers 1 of your combo points. Using a damaging finishing move with this combo point counts as if 7 combo points had been used. This allows you to have a powerful finisher. On its own, it isn't very powerful, but the Carrion Legendary makes it so you empower 4 of your combo points instead of just 1, allowing the Legendary to make decent value. You can pair this with Doomblade for big envenoms, but overall this Covenant spell and its legendary do not bring a lot to assassination. File of Serenity heals you for 20% of your maximum health and dispels you of everything except magic effects. It is a decent defensive, but not a reason to join the Carrion. If you still want to play Carrion, then Pelagos is your best soulbind. Being Venthyr gives you access to Flagellation as your Covenant rogue ability, and Door of Shadows as your Covenant signature ability. Flagellation deals moderate damage to your target, and then deals additional shadow damage for each combo point spent during the 12 seconds that follow the ability. The damage can be amplified by a conduit. On paper it deals decent damage, but in reality assassination rarely has enough combo points to spare in the short amount of time to make this burst worthwhile. You also gain a haste buff as you spend combo points within the flagellation window, but nothing overly crazy. The legendary reduces the cooldown of the ability and makes it grant a small versatility buff, but that is far too weak to be worth playing. Door of Shadows allows you to port away. It can be handy to escape, but be careful because it can be interrupted. If you still want to play Venthyr, then Nadja is your best toolbind. There are three kinds of conduits, Potency, Finesse and Endurance. As Assassination Rogue in PvP you want to play three Potency conduits and either one Finesse and two Endurance conduits, or 2 Finesse and 1 Endurance Conduits, depending on the situation. The first potency conduit you want to play is your Covenant Conduit. Septic Shock for the Night Fae immensely empowers the burst damage dealt by Sepsis. Sudden Fractures for the Necrolords greatly increases the sustained damage dealt by the Dot of Serrated Bone Spike. Reverberation for the Kyrians increases the damage dealt by Echoing Reprimand for more burst damage. Lashing Scars for Venthyrs greatly increases the lashing damage dealt by Flagellation, and is what makes Flagellation a powerful burst cooldown. The second potency conduit you want to play is Well Placed Steel. This increases the nature damage bonus given by Shiv, which is crucial for your burst damage. The third potency conduit you want to play is Lethal Poisons. It increases the damage of your weapon poisons by a substantial amount and works nicely alongside the talent Master Poisoner. The conduit Maim and Mangle can be considered instead, especially if you play with Doomblade. The first finesse conduit you want to play is Quick Decisions. This greatly increases the range of your shadow step while slightly reducing its cooldown. This allows you to surprise enemies by reaching them when they think they have more time or are far enough. Assassination is a spec that lacks mobility, so this conduit is very important. The second finesse conduit you want to play is Prepared for All. It simply allows you to reduce the cooldowns of your two main defensive abilities, Cloak of Shadows and Evasion. Having your defensives back when enemies think they are still on cooldown can give you a significant advantage and cause them to waste precious offensive cooldowns. The first endurance conduit you want to play is Recuperator. This conduit lets Slice and Dice heal you over time. It is a nice increase in sustained healing to help your healer since Slice and Dice is supposed to be up most of the time. The second endurance conduit you want to play is Cloaked in Shadows. This conduit allows you to gain a shield for 4 seconds when you enter stealth, allowing you to remain hidden longer after entering stealth if you have dots up on you. It can be very important to stay alive when your healer is in CC or when you need to run far before being taken out of stealth. You should always play your Covenant Conduit, Well Placed Steel, and either Lethal Poisons or Maim and Mangle as your Potency Conduits. I personally prefer Lethal Poisons. You should always play Quick Decisions and Recuperator as your first Finesse Conduit and Endurance Conduit respectively. The last slot should be Cloaked in Shadows when you will need to be able to stay in stealth to survive and might have dots up on you, like when you are facing a Rogue Mage team, and prepared for all the rest of the time. Dustwalker's Patch is the best Legendary by far. It allows you to reset your Vendetta by 1 second for every 30 energy spent. Vendetta is one of the best single target burst cooldowns in the game. Having it available more often dramatically increases your overall damage, output and pressure. Also, having Vendetta back under 2 minutes allows you to have it back before the enemy trinket if they used it on the previous Vendetta. 
This legendary also works particularly well with the 4 part set bonus that causes Vendetta to increase the tick rate of bleeds and poisons by 50% in PvP combat. Doomblade remains a good option, but it is now less valuable than it used to be because, um, unlike Dustwalker's patch, it doesn't synergize with the set bonus. It allows Mutilate to bleed the target for 45% of the damage dealt and increases the damage of Envenom by 5% per bleed. It means you can increase the damage by up to 20% if you are not Necrolord with Growth, Rupture, Internal Bleeding and Mutilated Flesh, and up to 25% if you are a Necrolord by adding the Serrated Bone Spike Bleed to all of this. It is a decent increase in both sustained and burst damage. Mark of the Master Assassin remains a fun option in 2v2. It allows you to have a 100% critical strike chance for 2.4 seconds in PvP combat after coming out of stealth. Therefore, by using Vanish or Shadow Melt offensively during your kill attempt, you can dramatically increase your damage by causing all of your dot effects to crit for a short period of time, as well as by lending two envenoms during the 2.4 second window that will critically strike. While doing this gives you one of the highest burst damage outputs in the entire game, it makes you very vulnerable because it forces you to burn Vanish, denying you of an important cooldown for your survival. In patch 9.2, every spec has had their own set bonus added to the game. The Assassination Rogue 2 part set bonus causes shift to increase the damage of bleeds and poisons by 40% on every nearby target for 9 seconds, and the 4 part set bonus causes Vendetta to increase the tick rate of bleeds and poisons on the target by 50% in PvP combat as long as Vendetta lasts. Both effects are very powerful and greatly empower the spec. Here are a few things to know. Sepsis, the Night Fit ability, is a poison and therefore has its damage increased by the 2 part set bonus and its tick rate increased by the 4 part set bonus. This makes Sepsis a very deadly ability when used within your burst window. Serrated Bone Spike dot effect is a bleed and therefore has its damage increased by the 2 part set bonus and its tick rate increased by the 4 part set bonus. The initial hit of Serrated Bone Spike is also counted as a bleed and therefore deals 40% more damage when used while a shiv is active on your target. This allows Serrated Bone Spike to deal very high damage on hit when you have your offensive cooldowns active. The highest crit I've seen on a geared player is about 16k. The 4 part set bonus is dynamic. That means any bleed and poison applied before or after using Vendetta will have its tick rate increased during Vendetta and will go back to normal when Vendetta expires. Therefore you do not need to refresh your bleeds and poisons before using Vendetta to benefit from the effect. Now let's continue with the last part of this guide, rotation, arena comps, macros and add-ons. There are three important aspects of the rotation as Assassination Rogue. The opener, the burst damage and the sustained damage. We'll go over each of them. The opener is a very important part of the game for rogues. This is when you may sub-target and use your stealth-based abilities. In the opener, you want to secure a CC on the enemy you are not attacking, usually the healer, and then immediately pressure your kill target. Depending on the situation, you may or may not want to use your burst cooldowns in the opener. I will show you different openers. The most simple way to open is when you face a team that cannot pre-use anything important between your sap on the healer and your kidney shot on the kill target. In that case, you want to sap the target you are not attacking and use Mark for Death, Kidney on your kill target. Then you will use Garot, Shiv, Rupture, Mutilate, Mutilate and Envenom. If you are a Necrolord, you want to use a Serrated Bone Spike instead of the first Mutilate. You could also perform the same opener but with your burst cooldowns. In that case, you would use Sap, Mark for Death, Kidney Shot, Vendetta, Garot, Shiv, Sepsis, Rupture, Mutilate, Mutilate and Envenom. If you are Kyrian or Venthyr, then you will use your Covenant ability instead of Sepsis, and if you are Necrolord, you will simply replace Sepsis with a Serrated Bone Spike, and use one more for damage instead of, uh, instead of Mutilate, because Serrated Bone Spike deals a lot of damage when used within your Shiv window. When you are facing classes that can't do anything while silenced, so Mages, Shadow or Discipline Priests, or Holy Paladins, then you will not use Mark for the Skinny Shot right away, as you can gain CC time by starting with Garot. In that case, what you want to do is sap the target that you are not attacking, then use Garot, Mutilate or Serrated Bone Spike, Rupture, and then Mark for Death Kidney Shot. You will follow this by a Shiv and then simply spam Mutilate and Envenom. If you want to use your Burst in that opener, then you will use Vendetta with your Kidney Shot and Sepsis, Equine Reprint or Flagellation after Shiv, and then proceed with Mutilate Envenom. And of course, if you are a Necrolord, then you will use a few Serrated Bone Spikes after Shiv instead of some Mutilates. When you are facing an enemy that can pre-use defensive cooldown if you sub their healer, such as a Windwalker Monk with Fortifying Brew or a Retribution Paladin with Shield of Vengeance, you want to sub them to prevent them from using anything. Then you want to cheap shot the target you're not attacking to allow your team to lend more CC, like Chastise Sphere, 
Polymorph or Repentance. At this point, one target is in the sap and the other one is in the cheap shot with more CC coming. So you can use your one combo point that you got from cheap shot on Slice and Dice, and then use Mark to Death Kidney Shot on the kill target. Then proceed with the openers I described just before. If you do it that way, it is impossible for your kill target to preemptively use any defensives, and you are more likely to force a trinket in your opener. All of these openers assume that the enemy team isn't in combat. When the enemy team is in combat and cannot be sapped, then you have two options. One, someone in your team can land CC on the enemy healer, maybe with DB Polymorph or Chastise Sphere, and in that case you will simply use Mark for Death Kidney Shot on the kill target, and proceed with the opener while your team lands CC at the exact same time. Two, your team cannot easily land CC and you have to help them with a cheap shot. For example, if you play with a Disciplined Priest, you want to cheap shot the target that you are not attacking, allowing your priest to walk closer and fear, and then you want to use Mark for Death Kidney Shot on your kill target, maybe with the help of your Shadow Step. If you play Nurkle Lord, there are many matchups where you will play Deeper Stratagem and not Marked for Death. That will obviously prevent you from starting the game with Marked for Death Kidney Shot since you will not play Marked for Death. In that case, you will simply start game with cheap shots and garrotes doing soft openers. Your goal then is to apply all of your dots to one or more targets and build your damage so that when you can finally land a 7 seconds Kidney Shot, you will force major defensive cooldowns. The burst rotation is important because it is usually what lends kills in Arena. In order to use your burst rotation successfully outside of the opener, you want to make sure that your team can land CC on the enemy healer if possible, or at least that you won't be using your cooldowns into a powerful defensive ability without forcing a trinket. Then you want to make sure Garrote and Rupture are applied on your target, and are not about to expire. You also want to have Slice and Dice active. Then you want to use Kidney Shot on your target, Vendetta, Shiv, Sepsis, Equing Reprimand or Flagellation depending on your covenant, Mutilate until 5 combo points, Envenom, Marked for Death, Envenom, and then you want to keep using Mutilate to build combo points and Envenom to spend them, unless you need to reapply your dots because they are about to expire. Keep in mind that because the full part set bonus makes your dot tick faster during Vendetta, you will need to reapply them rather quickly. If you are Necrolord, then use several serrated bone spikes during your burst rotation instead of Mutilates to build more combo points at a cheaper cost while doing more damage. If you are playing with the legendary Mark of the Master Assassin, then your burst rotation will be slightly different. You will want to use Vanish right after your Covenant ability, and with 4-5 to five combo points to be able to use Envenom immediately. Therefore the rotation becomes Kidney Shot, Shiv, Mutilate, Sepsis, Echoing Reprimand, or one more Mutilate and then Flagellation, and then Vanish, Envenom, Marked for Death, Envenom, Mutilate, Envenom. And then you keep using Mutilate to build and Envenom to spend, and reapply your dots whenever they are about to expire, if the target is still alive. Keep in mind that while the Vendetta paired with your Covenant cooldown is your biggest damage, you can still have some sort of soft burst every Kidney Shot by simply using Kidney Shot and Shiv on your kill target with CC on their healer, and using as many Envenoms as possible during that window. The sustained damage rotation is very important as Assassination Rogue because the spec has high sustained damage. The pressure that you can generate outside of Kidney Shot Ghost will allow you to drain the enemy healer's mana, initiate your ghost when the enemy team isn't at full health, and slowly kill them. Your sustained damage rotation is more of a priority list than an actual rotation. First, you want to make sure that your bleeds are on your main target, so you want to use Rupture with 4 combo points or more if it is about to fade, and then use Garrote if it is about to fade. Then you want to make sure a Slice and Dice is up, so use it with about 3 combo points if you do not have it up, no need to spend more on it, or use Envenom instead if you have Slice and Dice up and it is about to expire, to refresh it with the passive Cut to the Chase. Next on the priority list is applying Garrote and Rupture to a secondary target if you play a comb that benefits from cleave damage. And if all of that is already done, then you want to spend your combo points on Envenom, and last on the list is the use of Mutilate or Serrated Bone Spike to build combo points. Do not spend too many charges of Serrated Bone Spike outside of your Kidney Shot Ghost though, as the ability deals way more damage when Shiv is on your target. Playing good comp is the first step of being successful in Arena. When it comes to 2v2, Assassination is best played with a healer. Holy Priest is the best healer you can play with currently. High damage, high healing output and great CC. Having a healer that can chastise into fear the target you are not attacking every single kidney shot while providing significant damage is simply amazing. With a Holy Priest you want to have frequent and consistent setups with perfect 3 CC. At some point the enemy team will not have any cooldown to recover and will die. Holy Paladin is another great healer you can play with. Powerful healing output, great defensive cooldowns, and decent CC. With the Holy Paladin you can go into dampening because the healing is high, but you can also kill very quickly by using bobs early to reverse the pressure, while also landing devastating CC change with a kidney on the kill target and a hammer of justice into repentance on the healer. 
Restoration Druid works with Assassination Rogue as well, with fantastic healing into Dampening and great CC, but it forces you to play towards Dampening more because Druids do not bring much offensively. It is a very different playstyle than if you are playing with a Priest, so be sure to like it. Discipline Priest is a decent partner when they have their asset bonus. They bring powerful defensive cooldowns and great damage, but struggle to heal high damage in Dampening, and have a hard time getting CC by themselves on mobile targets such as Restoration Druids. With the Discipline Priest you want to deal as much damage as possible, to be as aggressive as possible to overwhelm the enemy team and end the game quickly. Restoration Shamans are not that good right now, so playing with one might be difficult simply because they struggle healing the damage of some classes, but they otherwise work rather well with Assassination Rogues. Mist with Monks do not synergize well with Asa, so you don't really want to play with one. When it comes to 3v3, Assassination Rogues have several strong compositions. You can play Rogue Mage Priest. At the moment, it is better to play with a Fire Mage and a Holy Priest, but other spec combinations also work. When playing RMP, you want to deal high damage to one target and then CC on the targets you are not attacking whenever you go for a kidney shot on the kill target. If you properly rotate your offensive cooldowns and create good setups with DB Poly and Chastise Fear on kidney shot, you can easily overwhelm the enemy team and eventually catch them without defensive. Another very powerful option is Assassination Rogue Destruction Warlock Holy Priest. This comp has insanely high damage. If the Warlock is the target, he can survive for an extended period of time allowing you to eventually set up a kill on someone. If you are the target, then the Warlock will kill someone in the blink of an eye. The pressure you can generate with this comp is what will allow you to catch the enemy team in a vulnerable position, land CC and win games. You can also play with a Shadow Priest and a Holy Paladin. This comp revolves around doing strong sustained damage, cleaving on multiple targets when possible, while still doing powerful setups with instant CC on multiple targets. You will try to kill with your kidney on your kill target, and Psychic R, Silence and Fear on the healer, or Hammer of Justice. Assassination also works with a Hunter and a healer, but noticeably less so than Subtlety or Outlaw. Macros are very important in PvP. They can allow you to use spells on players without targeting them, for example. Macros will increase your efficiency and allow you to focus on what's happening around you more by making some actions much more simple. If you are very new to macros and wish to know how they work in depth and what exactly you can do with them, I suggest you find a guide about this because I will not give too many explanations in this video. All the macros that I'm about to show you will be in the description. The first and most important kind of macros are macros to CC targets without targeting them. You can do that with every CC spell, so Sap, Blind, Kidney Shot, Cheap Shot, Garrote, Kick, Poison Knife and also Shadow Step. Personally, I use Keybinds to change my focus targets in Arena and my CC macros lend CC on my focus targets. You can do a simple macro like this one that will only ever use Cheap Shot on your focus target, or a modifier macro like this one that uses Cheap Shot on your target if you press your ability, but if you press the modifier plus the ability then it uses Cheap Shot on your focus target. You can also create macros that will target a specific enemy. For instance, you can use this macro that will always attempt to sap Arena 1 and no one else. Because rogues have many CC abilities, I prefer using focus and simply swapping my focus when I need to CC multiple enemies and only using Arena 1, 2 and 3 for a sap. The reason why I use Arena 1, 2 and 3 for sap is that this is the best way to sap enemy stealth targets out of stealth. If you spam this macro as soon as you walk near another rogue, a druid or a hunter, it will sap him out of stealth the second you detect him. There is also this sap macro to get enemy stealthers that you can use in battlegrounds or open world, but you will notice that it is not as effective as the arena sap macro. I also recommend having a shadow step sap macro to be able to quickly sap demon hunters who have their true side activated, a shadow step kick macro so that you can kick an enemy from range without having to press two different buttons, and a shadow step focus kick focus macro for the same reason. Having a shadow step macro on your allies can also be great when you need to escape a dangerous situation so that you can use shadow step without wasting time targeting your ally. Another very useful macro is Tricks of the Trade alongside Kini Shot. That way you give damage to your teammate on your ghost when playing with the talent Thick of Thieves without having to target them to use Tricks of the Trade. Since Tricks of the Trade is free of cost and of the global cooldown, you can keep this macro even when not playing with the talent Thick of Thieves. These macros are the ones I use the most. You can create more if you find one that helps you in some situations, but do not make the mistake of trying to make too many macros for everything. A few add-ons are practically mandatory for PvP. Gladius, Omnibar, Big Debuffs and Ability Team Tracker are the most important ones. Diminish and Jack Party Cast Bars are also a great help, but if you are a beginner you don't need to concern yourself with these yet and can focus on learning more about the game and your overall awareness first. I also use Trophy GCD and Details, as well as a couple weak auras, but 
Um, these add-ons are more for UI than for actual PvP combat. Gladius is an add-on that adds enemy arena frames to your UI way better than the default ones. You can see the enemy trinket, important buffs and debuffs, health bar, resource bar, cast bar, and diminishing returns. Having a way to track diminishing returns allows you to know when you can safely use your CC abilities again, and being able to see all the cast bars of the entire enemy team in one same spot can help you notice important casts that you would otherwise have missed. Same for a CC that lands on the enemy team and doesn't come from you or major cooldowns that they use without you noticing right away. Gladius is also highly customizable. If you download it, you will notice that my version does not look like the default one. I spent a bit of time modifying it until I had something that I like. In case you want it, the export link is in the description. Omnibar is an add-on that allows you to track the cooldowns of enemy abilities. This is crucial for a PvP. Knowing when they have their CC, offensive cooldowns, defensive cooldowns, or interrupts will allow you to make better decisions that can change the outcome of a game. For instance, if you see that a Windwalker Monk has Leg Sweep available, then you will make sure to avoid standing near his target to prevent a double Leg Sweep. Or, if you are his target, you will attempt to dodge it with Soul Shape or Evasion. Or at least pre-faint it. In the same way, if you see that the enemy rogue has Kidney Shot ready, you can attempt to preemptively use Evasion or faint if he acts like he will use it on you. Having access to all this information regarding enemy abilities will greatly help you. Many spells are listed in the add-on files by default, but you can manually add spells that are missing either directly into the files or via the in-game interface. You can create multiple bars, drag them wherever you want on your screen and select which spells you want each bar to display. For instance, I created 4 bars, one for interrupts, one for major defensive cooldowns, one for important offensive cooldowns, and one for everything that is CC mobility or a spell that could stop or defuse a go, such as Greater Fade or Intervene. Big Debuffs is an add-on that increases the size of important debuffs on your party frames, among other things. This is very helpful to notice CC on your teammates, especially if such CC means you have to use defensive cooldown for yourself or to help them. Ability Team Tracker is an add-on that tracks the cooldowns of your team members. Just like Omnibar, you can select the spells that you want to display for each spec and manually add any missing spell. This is extremely useful. With it, you can know when your team has trinkets available, when they have defensive to survive on their own or to save you, when they have CC or when they have burst cooldowns. Diminish is an add-on that shows you the diminishing returns on any target you want. Personally, I use it only for myself. That way I know when I am no longer on Sunday off, for example. It can be very useful against classes like Rogue. Pressing evasion right as you come off stun DR may allow you to dodge a kidney shot. Also, knowing when you are on stun DR allows you to know when it is safe for you to play aggressively and attack the enemy team and when it is time for you to start retreating to prevent the enemy team from having a go of their own. The add-on can also be used to see the same thing on your team members. It is nice, nice information, but I don't actually end up doing much with it as a rogue, so I simply disabled it. You can activate it if you wish. Jack's Party Cast Bars is an add-on that allows you to see the cast bars of your team members. It is very useful to know when your mage is casting a polymorph or a GPI, when your priest is casting a mind games or a mind control, or when a warlock is casting a fear of or a chaos bolt. This add-on is a lot more useful than it appears as it allows you to time your spells better with your teammates' casts. And that is all for this guide. If you wish to see arena footage, you can find some on my channel, where I try to regularly upload arena gameplay. I hope this guide was helpful and clear. Do not hesitate to ask questions in the comments, I read all of them and always try to answer questions. I also updated the written assassination PvP guide on Icy Veins if you want to have a look at a written version of the guide. It is slightly different than what I did in the video because my video can follow the structure that I choose, which is not the case with the Icy Veins guide, but most of the information is the same. I wish you a great day and see you in my next video.